Hello there. In this video, we are going to see what instruction set architecture is and how it relates to the CPU. So recall that in the previous video, we modified our understanding of the CPU and the memory and their interactions a little bit. And we kind of ended on the theme of, or we concluded that there would be um, separation of buses for data and for instructions. And then we said that the CPU operates in three stages. One is the fetch phase or fetch stage in which it floats uh, an address onto the instruction bus. And then the memory uh, responds back with some data that is captured in the instruction buffer, which is then decoded by the control unit. Right. So that was the first stage of getting the instruction inside the CPU. The second stage was the control unit trying to make sense of the instruction in the instruction buffer and inferring what action needs to be taken. And once it has inferred what action needs to be taken, the ALU and the register file uh, together will accomplish that action. Uh, usually that is how it it would go now uh, let's look at the memory part of things right so here what i have done is instead of um, having memory which is uh, an array of bytes i have memory region that is uh, an array of uh, four bytes and the reason to that will become uh, uh, evident in a minute but the idea is you have one two three four such bytes uh, you know horizontally placed so if you notice the address here is changing by hex 4 right so each uh, row here is four bytes now why is it four bytes uh, that has to do with the fact that the instruction set architecture that we will look at is the risk phi uh, rv32i and it uh, turns out that in RV32i, each instruction is 32 bits. So the bit pattern that composes an instruction, that would be 32 bits. And I just wanted to kind of demonstrate that, that in the memory region or memory address X20C, we have some bit pattern that will be interpreted to be an instruction. Okay, so moving on, this is how the CPU would uh consume this address so we we discussed in the previous uh, video that there is something called a program counter which is a special register within the cpu so the program counter points to the address from where to fetch the instruction so in this case it is pointing to the address uh 20c right and now what happens is this address hits the memory and the memory will return back uh, the contents of 20c in the instruction buffer and once it is in the instruction buffer the control unit here looks at the content of the instruction buffer and infers that oh okay you know along with the alu and the register file it needs to accomplish um, an operation in this case it is some ad related operation we'll come to the details of how this is working in a minute again um, but now let's talk about what is IC mean. I mean, I hinted at the fact that it it relates to instructions, but what does it really mean? So to understand this, we have to consider the following: that let's say we want to write software that runs on some CPU, right? So the CPU is a generic machine. Generic machine meaning, given instruction, it can follow those instructions and then execute. You know a flow of such instructions sequence of such instructions but then the question is who decides those instructions not the series of uh, uh, instructions but uh, the actual instructions how many of those are there what is the variety what all instructions can i use to com compose a program just a moment let me so who decides the instructions so it turns out 
that usually the hardware designers or architects these are the guys who decide uh, the instruction set so the instruction set is essentially collection of encodings for various operations that the CPU will perform. Oh, just a moment, you can perform. That's all. So the instruction set architecture typically would uh, would give the encodings or instructions. What that then means is, if we took the memory region, the X20C that we have here, and if we lay out a bit pattern that is specified or that complies with the specification in the uh, RISC-V RV32I specification, the ISA specification, then this would be a valid instruction that the CPU can execute. That's the idea. And now it turns out in the RISC-V world, there are seven encodings or seven types of instructions. And as you can see, so this is 32 bits. And the 32 bits have different meaning, different uh, depending on uh, which type of instru instruction it is. And so type of instruction, uh, there are like six, R, I, S, S, B, U, J, U, J. So we will discuss this in a while, but the key is these instruction types are based on the kind of operations and the actors involved. Right. So suppose if we have the situation where in the ALU we want to add two registers, let's say X3, uh, or let's do X2 and X1 and then put the answer back in X3, X1, X2, X3 being the general purpose registers on a risk by machine, for example. So you can see that all of the actors involved here, the input and the output are registers. So that's an R type of instruction. Now let's just tease apart the R type instruction and we'll dwell into details of others, you know, as, uh, as we progress in other videos. But now what you should notice is there is a field to specify the operation code. Then there is another field worth three bits to convey the variety of uh, operation code or the variant of operation code we'll, we'll see an example of this and then there are more bits here which allow us to have even more um, variations in the operation code so these bits here these bits here and the first seven bits are dedicated to defining what the operation is and then you see in between here this is five bits dedicated to the destination register. So for example, if we were to specify X3 here, the number to be represented in five bits is the number three. So this would be like one one. So similarly, there is RS1, which selects the source one. There is RS2, which selects the source two. These are five bits each. And five bits because RISC-V CPU we mentioned has 32 general purpose registers and two to the power of five is 32. So five bits are enough. So that was about the R type of instruction. Then we have got I type instruction, which is in which you have two registers and one immediate value. So this field here, uh, just a moment, yeah. So this field here, is 12 bits worth of immediate value. So let's say if we were to do something like x3 equals x2 plus 10, so this 10 as a number need not come from a register. It can directly be taken from the instruction. So numbers that can be represented in 12 bits can go here. 
And then this immediate value can be negative, positive, all of that. So the 11th bit is like the sign bit. Then moving on, S is for store instructions. Uh, SB um, is for, I suppose, branch instructions. Uh, U is for uh, long unsigned uh, integer uh, instructions. And then J is for jump, U unsigned uh, long jump or jump instructions. The details of these again, uh, you know, we need to look up and I can, uh, I can spend more time on this in upcoming videos. But for now, what I wanted to convince you with is there are only six types of instructions and they have their encodings specified as part of the ISA. And once you have your bit pattern in memory laid out in exactly this encoding, then that bit pattern will be a valid instruction. That's about it. So let's take, a uh, let's take a look at an example. So we looked at, uh, you know, this random pattern here, but that pattern wasn't random. It actually means something. It's a valid uh, risk five uh, instruction. So what that pattern is denoting, first off, it's an I type of instruction. And how do I know that? Well, that has to do with the fact that there is a 15 here. And also I wrote down this here, which is same as this here that's how i am able to identify it but then typically how would you go about identifying it so we need to be aware of this opcode then this opcode and that's about it right so uh yeah extending converting these hex numbers we get this bit pattern which translates into let's see so the destination register here is x2 because there is two here um source register one is x1 and the value of hex 15 i think that is uh, 20. so what this instruction is translating to and i, I suppose this opcode is for add immediate so add immediate give the result in x2 the addition of x1 and 20. so this is what this instruction is and now let's take a look at um, how this ISA specification looks like. So it's very straightforward and very tiny. And as you can see here, for, okay, let me just maybe bring your attention to the important things. So first off, if you see there are six types of instruction, right? And let me you know, change my pen a little bit so that, yeah, okay. So see that there are only six type of instructions. Then further, let's say there is an add instruction. So the opcode for that add instruction is this bit pattern. Function three has to be this. Function has to be this. Function seven has to be this, right? So this is referring to this field, this field, this field, and these can change. So this is up to the programmer, right? And we'll, we'll see how machine code is generated in upcoming videos so trust me that the programmer is the one in control of these uh, these fields how it's done we'll, we'll come to that in the next video okay. so similarly if we were to look for uh, our bit pattern so i suppose that would be this right so the opcode was i suppose hmm, interesting so the opcode was 3, 3, what is the opcode here? So the pattern seems to be this, uh, which is not the case here. Mm, okay, so, well, the pattern should have been actually this, right? So it would then become what? Let's see, let's uh, try this out. So this should be 1, 3. So this should be 1, 3. Right. So based on this one three, the CPU gets to know that it's an immediate type of an instruction, add immediate. And then the internal circuitry understands that what once it sees this pattern in the opcode field, it'll go ahead and infer the function, the, the bits available here as the immediate value. That's the idea. Right. So yeah, uh, the link to this 
particular PDF is also in the description, video description. So you, you can also, you know, locally open it up and try and understand it. And if you see the description is available here, right? And much like what we mentioned, destination with source one plus immediate, and that's exactly the same as destination, source one and immediate. So that's the idea of ISA and uh, encodings of the instruction uh, and how the CPU uh, understands or interprets them. Now this PDF has a lot more uh, instructions. We were only taking a look at the RB32i uh, because they are limited in number and conveys all the information that we wanted to, um, at least that I wanted to highlight. And uh, there are other extensions also, like if you have the M extension, which is the multiply extension, then you get few more instructions. You get few more opcodes essentially. But we need not care about that. Uh, we will come to this much later if need be. Uh, but right now we'll only deal with RV32i and these are the six encodings uh, for the RV32i instruction set. And with that, what we'll do is we'll conclude the video for today. And um, in the next video, we'll kind of do a demo on how to generate these instructions. And we'll try to use uh, the quick emulator uh, emulation to try and explore the internals of the CPU a little more. Uh, with that, thank you for hanging around this long and I'll see you in the next video.